Hello world! Hackers targeting YouTubers and turning their channels into Elon Musk crypto scams is a bit of a problem, and if you don't believe me, just ask Linus. But I may have uncovered a case of cybercriminals actually trying to pay YouTubers to spread malware. It all started when I received a DM on Twitter from one Lisa Burgess, the advertising and digital media manager at Foxy Defender. We're excited about advertising on your channel and discussing a potential partnership with you. Essentially, they want me to promote their anti-malware software, Foxy Defender. Now, most sponsorship requests I get just go straight into the bin, for the simple reason that they want me to promote something that's completely irrelevant to my content. Like the time I got an email from a company wanting me to sell you guys their portable bathtub. But anti-malware software is pretty relevant to my content, so I gave these guys a second look. At a brief glance, their website looks kinda legit, so I googled them. But other than their website itself, I couldn't find anything. There is an old Android game with the same name, Foxy Defender, but other than that, nothing. There's no reviews of their software, nothing. So I decided to run a simple who is check on their domain, and it was registered merely days before Lisa DM'd me. So yeah, this is rather sus. It's almost as if the site had just been created to target YouTubers through fake sponsorship offers. Though Lisa didn't send me any malware, she hadn't tried to pack me in any way, so I was curious what would come next. So I told Lisa I was interested and asked for more information. Whilst I was waiting for her response, I did some digging and found that Foxy Defender has quite a few advertising and digital media managers. Everyone's a manager, it seems. All these Twitter profiles are obviously Sock Puppet accounts. Sock Puppet simply referring to an account made around a fake identity that's controlled by someone else. Some clear evidence that these people just aren't real is firstly, there's no tweets from these guys, only retweets. And up until recently, those retweets were seemingly completely random, until the point at which these accounts were presumably bought by the bad guys specifically for this campaign, and suddenly they're really interested in cybersecurity. The reason cybercriminals will often buy sock puppet accounts off some dark web forum rather than make their own is because these profiles go back over a decade. They have a few followers and some post history, so they have way more credibility than just some newly created account. As for the profile pictures, these are obviously AI created. The reflections in these sunglasses just don't match, and I'm no fashion guru, but what are those earrings? However, at this point, Lisa got back to me and told me the details of the ad they wanted and proceeded to ask me a bunch of questions about how often I post, whether I have a waiting list and how much I wanted to be paid. This really caught me off guard because typically operations targeting YouTubers aren't very sophisticated at all. For example, Linus Tech Tips was hacked after an employee received a phishing email that looked something like this, an offer to sponsor one of their videos, but with a download link for a zip file containing the contract. After extracting the zip, what looked like a PDF was really an executable in disguise, which contained, you guessed it, malware. This is usually how YouTubers are hacked because it's very low effort on the part of the cyber criminals. They just scoop up as many emails as possible from channel about pages and send their phishing emails en masse. Then they just sit back and wait and don't really have to do anything else. But here they're really engaging with me in the way a normal sponsor would. But then, after answering their questions, they asked for an email address to send the contract to. I figured this was my Linus moment. They were simply going to send me a spicy PDF and that would be the end of it. But no, I received a completely clean email sent using Adobe's digital signature service, which took me to a legit contract. Of course, this is just copy pasted from some template, but then again, that goes for pretty much most contracts. However, the only thing that didn't look completely generic here was the mailing address of the company. After doing some Googling, I found that this was the same address as the company behind Malwarefox.com, a completely legit company selling real anti-malware software. And if something looks familiar here, well that's because the bad guys have pretty much cloned their site and replaced all mentions of Malwarefox with Foxy Defender. Both sites have a big red download button. On the legit site, that's for their anti-malware software. But on the fake site, it's the opposite, actual malware. In particular, this seems to be a variant of malware known as Vidar Stealer. It's a nasty info stealer trojan designed to scoop up everything from cryptocurrency wallets to save passwords, credit card details, and session tokens. My YouTube session token, of course, is the exact thing they'd need to take over this channel and repurpose it for crypto scamming. 
But was that the actual plan? I mean, our good friend Lisa wasn't pressuring me to download their malware at all. Maybe they just assumed that in making the ad for them, I would have downloaded it and run it. Or perhaps they never planned to infect me and instead intended on sending me some kind of legit software to make the ad about. So I'd never know about the malware being spread on foxydefender.com, the website I'd be sending you guys to in a theoretical sponsor spot. I mean, cyber miscreants spending money on legitimate forms of marketing isn't new. In a recent video, we saw how bad guys were buying Google search advertising on search terms for popular software, in one case, GIMP. So when someone searched for GIMP, they'd likely end up on a malicious clone of the site and unknowingly download malware. Coincidentally, in that case, the exact same kind of malware was used, FIDAR Stealer. I reached out to the legit Malwarefox people to let them know what was going on, and as you can imagine, they weren't too happy. Literally minutes after receiving their response, Lisa's Twitter account was suspended, and the Foxy Defender site was marked as malicious by all major browsers. So I can only presume these guys must have some kind of hotline to Google and Twitter. Which is great, but thanks to that, we'll never know what Lisa's grand plan was, whether I was the target, or if they wanted me to unironically promote their malware-laden website. You might think it seems obvious that they just wanted to take over this channel and repurpose it for a standard Elon Musk crypto scam, but I'm not so sure. The Linus Tech Tips hack only made the scammers behind it around $15,000, which, don't get me wrong, is a nice chunk of money, but that's an embarrassingly low payoff for hacking one of the biggest names in tech, and so these guys can't be making much money at all from hacking much smaller YouTubers. I reckon there'd be way more potential in tricking a YouTuber into making a genuine ad promoting malware. And I was curious to see if that was the plan. So I reached out to the bad guys behind this operation on the off chance they would agree to an interview, but I never heard back. Let me know in the comments what you make of all of this, and I'll see you in the next video. Have a good one.